Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a differential equation. We haven't done differential equations for a while, I just realized and wanted to do this problem, which is fairly simple. So if you're new to calculus and differential equations, don't worry about it, this is going to be fairly simple and I think easy to follow through. Anyway, so we have dy over dx equals x plus y plus 1. y is a function of x, and dy over dx represents the derivative of y with respect to x. And the derivative of y happens to be the sum of x plus y plus 1. Okay, so we're going to find a function that satisfies this equation or a family of functions that satisfy this equation. All right, ready? So... When you have an equation like this and everything is so linear and nice, we can do the following. We can go ahead and use substitution. And z is a good candidate, and you can use t, you can use anything, but I'd like to use z because it's x, y, z, right? Let's go ahead and call this whole thing z. That gives us the following, dy over dx equals z. So what is so good about this, right? This doesn't look very like a... It's, it doesn't look like a helpful expression, but here's the thing. If you know that z is equal to that, obviously, you can differentiate both sides, right? So from here, you're going to be able to find the derivative of z with respect to x, as well as the derivative of y with respect to x. So that's just, that's what's going to come up. So let's go ahead and do something nice. So first step was substitute z for the whole thing, and then write, write down what it means. And then... We just wrote z equals x plus y plus 1 because that was our assumption. And now we're going to go ahead and differentiate both sides with respect to x. So if you differentiate z, you're going to get dz over dx. The derivative of x with respect to x is dx over dx. But guess what? You can replace it with 1 easily, right? So you no need to write that. So it's just 1. And then the derivative of y is dy over dx. And then the derivative of a constant is 0, so you don't have to write it. Great. So don't get confused. The derivative of x is 1. The derivative of 1 is 0. Okay? So now, how can I use this equation in my equations? Well, here's the thing. We do know that dz over dx is equal to 1 plus dy over dx. So from here, we can do something like this we can go ahead and replace dy over dx with z because that's what it is. Look at that. So our goal was actually to get rid of y because we kind of changed our variable from x to z. And obviously, you don't want to have anything that contains y in your new equation. So replace dy over dx with z, right? That makes sense, doesn't it? And you'll get a separable Nice, beautiful differential equation. Very easy to solve. I'll show you how. Let's go ahead and divide both sides by z plus 1 and multiply by dx. In other words, switch these around and just write this as z plus 1 and you'll get the following. Awesome. We separated the variables and guess what? We can integrate both sides. So the goal with separable differential equations is, in other words, when you have something like f of y dy equals g of x dx, this is actually separable, meaning that this function only depends on y, and this function only depends on x, therefore you can just integrate both sides. Make sense? Easy, very easy. And if your equation is not separable, you can actually kind of make it separable by way of substitution, or you can try to come up with an exact equation. Maybe it's already exact, or you can use an integrating factor. Anyways, it's a long story. We'll probably do a little bit more on that later. Anyway, so this is the equation I'm getting, and let's integrate both sides, okay? When you integrate dz over z plus 1, I'm going to make some assumptions, but you can also use absolute value. But let me tell you, it's kind of messy, and there is no need, as far as I know. I could be wrong, but I'm just going to assume that z plus 1 is positive, okay? So when you integrate this, think about it. What is the integral of 1 over z? Well, z is the derivative of, 1 over z is the derivative of ln z. So 1 over z plus 1 is similar because it's just 1 added, right? So it's not going to make a huge difference. So this is ln z plus 1, in other words. Make sense? Easy. You just differentiate. Sometimes, trying to integrate a function, if you can find a quick antiderivative, 
and then you can differentiate it and if it matches your function then you're good if not try to adjust it okay C because constants can always be taken care of most of the time and the integral of dx is just going to be x but i need a constant so i'm going to put it on the right hand side oh by the way i'm also going to show you the result from wolfram alpha let's see if it's going to match ours so now my goal is to solve for y i haven't solved for y yet but let's solve for z first can i isolate z and yes sometimes you can't do it but remember this is base e so use the property of or definition of logarithms and you're going to get z plus 1 equals e to the power x plus c which can be written as e to the x times e to the c and since c is constant e to the c is also constant let's call it k k for constant right well i don't think that's how you spell it but you get the idea okay so now we got the following z plus 1 equals k e to the x is that good almost let's subtract 1 to isolate z and we get this but our goal is to solve for y what is the relationship between z and y so let's go back and remember that's why it's important to take notes right when you're solving a problem like this you should have this somewhere and z is x plus y plus one so that means i can replace z with x plus y plus one and that's going to give me x plus y plus one equals k e to the x minus one again my goal is to solve for y, so I should isolate it. Let's isolate it, not too bad. You can just subtract x plus 1, and y equals, from here you get k e to the x minus x, minus 1, minus 1, that's just going to be a minus 2. Now, are we supposed to add a constant? No, we already done that, and you don't need a constant because negative 2 has to be there. I'll show you why in a little bit, why it has to be there, because no other number will do. Make sense? Okay. Now, is there another way to solve this problem? I'd be curious to know. I couldn't think of anything off the top of my head right now, but I'm just going to go ahead and show you the result from Wolfram Alpha. But before that, I want to go ahead and check my work and quickly differentiate this expression. Okay. Since it's in terms of x, we can easily differentiate it. Not all equations are like that. You can't extract y completely, but this one was a good one. Anyways, if you differentiate it, remember the derivative of e to the x is same thing so k is not going to matter derivative of x is minus one now is this actually equal to x plus y plus one so let's evaluate x plus y plus one based on our solution for y x plus k e to the x minus x minus two plus one and this is going to give us k e to the x x is going to cancel out beautiful minus two plus one minus one and yay we got the same thing therefore these two things are equal which means our solution is valid and good let's go ahead and take a look at the result from wolfram alpha and yay well it's a little different because wolfram alpha uses c sub one so they don't run out of constants but i just use the k same thing and y of x means y is a function of x make sense and this brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye